Welcome to A Word on the Word with Lesson Tracy King. Hello and welcome to A Word on the Word with Les and Tracy King. Now we're continuing our study of the seven churches yes, of Revelations are. and this is part two of our discussion on the church of Ephesus. That's right. So if you haven't seen part one, we invite you to come check it out at a wordontheword.tv at our website that we can kind of catch up mm -hmm. where we're picking up in the show today. And we'll review a little bit here and in part one, we cover a little history on the city and the meaning for the name of Ephesus, which meant first desirable or last place, right. depending on the source. We right. We went verse by verse from Revelations chapter 2, verse 1, all the way through verse 4, yep. and noted that Jesus opens his letter with a personal identification and connection that showed that he has authority over the church in Ephesus. And his interest in the church at Ephesus mm -hmm. by saying he holds the stars or the messenger in the right hand and that he walks among the churches. Right, we connected this picture of Jesus to the idea that he's our savior with authority, but he also has immense care and concern for our lives and our experiences. Not a tyrant. You're right, as much as he <laughs> has authority over us, he That's cares right. even more for us. Right. Um, and that was an important part of the opening statement with the church in Ephesus, right? Exactly. And now we get the whole idea that Jesus is represented in a different manner in the book of Revelations than in the Gospels, right? Right. But we also need to remember that he is still our Savior and he hasn't he stopped caring about us. So he's not a new Jesus, guys, but one who cares right. and is concerned about our faith. We presented this idea that he does not walk amongst the church nope. just to reign authority over us and our bad behavior. <laughs> but to share in our successes and our failures and our experiences to really kind of help us get through all of that. So he's just not there busting us out on our sin and our bad behavior. He's there to be with us as we go through it, right? Right, which is aligned completely with the scriptures. Yeah, so in part one, we also covered verses two through four where Jesus acknowledged the hard work of the Ephesians and their suffering and that yep. they had successfully tested false prophets. And also how they had not tolerated wickedness. So right. all those things are good because they align with solid doctrine and behaviors within the church. But it wasn't the only thing he was concerned about. No, that's right. Now, Jesus personally connected with the Ephesians in this opening statement and then commended them for their hard work. And he made sure that they knew he was in touch with them personally mm -hmm. as much as somebody who was just making sure that they were checking all the boxes mm -hmm. and they were doing all the right things and they were trying to, you know, keep from doing all the bad things, right? That's right. And in verse 4, Jesus begins addressing some of their shortcomings and problems, right? Right. And let's be clear. We all have shortcomings. We all have Come problems, <laughs> even as Christians in our Christian lives. And right? Jesus tells them that even though that they had been doing good, they had lost their first love. Which was Jesus's work at the cross yep. and for those who are lost and for his people. Right. And this is also in alignment with the Gospels. And we can't do enough good deeds, guys, right. to make up for compassion and love. Right. So now we're going to pick up in Revelations chapter 2, <laughs> verse 5 in this show. So we're going to get right into our first biblical thought. And? Covering these uh, topics. Absolutely. Start so our, with that, okay? And that's our first love is what? His shed blood. That's right. And we're in Revelations chapter 2, verse 5. And it says, consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from That's its place. Serious. Damn. Now, we can easily think that if Jesus is talking to a church, that he's not talking directly <laughs> to us as an individual, but right. that would be a wrong assumption. So as we continue on to examine the magnitude in which the Ephesians have fallen, Maybe this is an important time for us to kind of compare ourselves to where they're at or maybe where sure. someone else is at in our lives and realize it's just not a letter to an ancient church Way that has no then. relative <laughs> uh, application to our lives, right? Exactly, and one of the most common mistakes made by Christians is that we forget that salvation was a gift and it wasn't on our own merit. That's right. We know this because it's a common theme and warning throughout the Bible, especially in the New Testament. And the Old Testament Jews became very arrogant and stiff-necked. And we yeah, see the New Testament believers are warned not to think that salvation is by deeds. Here's where it says that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and mm -hmm. this not of yourself. This right. is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Now, you know, if we think we're special and deserving of God, we would lose sight of our first love, which is that what God loved us first. Right. Our first love was God's great love and sacrifice for us at the cross. And we need to remember that. It's not about how much you go to church, how much you read the Bible and all those things, which are all good and they're critical to grow in love with God 
but that's not ex exactly what he's talking about. No. And again, we see the following message in Ephesians 3, verse 18 and 19. It says, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep yeah. the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. The fullness of God does not come just by hating evil, you guys. No, it doesn't. But it comes by, you know, loving the evildoer. And we know non-believers hate evil too, and they don't have the fullness of God, so it's just <laughs> not by hating evil. And it seems that we feel like that is what the church in Ephesus was doing right. and what a lot of people do today. And really, the fullness of God comes with the presence of God expressed by really loving those who do wrong. And this is a tough one because it's really yeah. hard to love those who do wrong and especially those who like bring about evil on others. So it's really hard. Very but hard. the fullness of God is about loving those who do that, right? That's right. And maybe the Ephesians became more focused on religion right. than love. And we can easily become more focused on religion than love, I well, think. Well, that's an easy one. Religion is easy to do. Love is and not so easy difficult. to do until right. you can really get in the habit of being free in God and expressing the fullness of God through your actions. Then love becomes easier than just engaging in religious activities that are empty. And a prayer is, Lord, help me love others like you love them. Absolutely. Help me see them like you see them. <laughs> Many well-intended Christians become more focused on conquering evil yep. than the conversion of an evil heart. And here's what it says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Know in all these things that we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Jesus set the example for us in this very thing in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when he could have called down a legion of angels to defend him and smite the evildoers. Um, but instead, he just to let them arrest him. Well, his choice was an act of love at the cross and the conversion of hearts through his sacrifice. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next biblical thought, and that is bad practices can bring about his hate. And we're reading this in Revelation chapter 2, verse 6, and it says, But you have this in your favor, you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Jesus returns to commending the Ephesians on how they have done well to hate sin and evil, and he tells them that they have done well to hate the practices of this group by the name of the Nicolaitans. That's right, and the teachings and the practices of the Nicolaitans is mentioned twice to the churches here in the Ephesians and next to the church in Pergamum. Now, scholars have differing opinions about who these Nicolaitans were and exactly <laughs> what their practices entailed. But... Well, some scholars believe that the name of the group comes from the founder of the group. Right, and some then turn around and say, they believe that the name is symbolic of the group's doctrine and their behavior. Right. So we're just going to look at this just a little bit closer. That's right. Now, if we're to conclude that the name of the sect is symbolic and not the name of the founder, we can draw some insight from that name. Right. So according to Strong's Concordance, the word Nicolaitans means destruction of people. So a little bit of an insight there on a connection stuff. of the name <laughs> to their behavior probably right. here. In the biblical commentaries about the Nicolaitan doctrine is that their teachings misled Christians into accepting sin yeah. and carelessly engaging in sin because, well, why? They had the liberty in Christ, and guys, we still <laughs> see that doctrine today. That's right. The Nicolaitans misled Christians apparently into sexual <laughs> immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. That's right. And here's how the Apostle Paul addressed this topic with the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 20. He said, No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God, and I do not want you to participate with demons. The Apostle Paul was addressing the fact that we cannot participate in activities that right. support that endorse or even give the appearance that idolatry is not destructive to Christians. So right. even though you have liberty in Christ, there are things, because <laughs> even if you have a strong faith, there are things that can be destructive to your faith and to your life, right? Exactly. And Paul specifically mentions that Christians should not be eating and drinking food that's sacrificed to demons. Right. So the Apostle Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, the following, I have a right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have a right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. That's right. Now, you know, what we do know is that Jesus hated their teachings and their practices. And from what we see in the letter to the church of Pergamum, that the teachings were connected in that letter to sexual immorality and to the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Now, what we do know is that the Ephesians were good at testing false teachers and yeah, to were. not tolerate mm -hmm. wicked people. Right. Now, note to self, modern day Christian, mm -hmm. adultery and fornication, even between consenting no. adults, is hated by Jesus. <laughs> 
and it's not an act of your Christian liberty. No, it's so not. those kind of things have not changed, and Jesus mm -hmm. hates them. And that's actually what was going on when it talks about sexual immorality mm -hmm. in the practices of the Nicolaitans there. So mm, That's right, you know, yeah. and so let's go on to our next biblical thought. And that's victory for the fight is at the tree of life. All right, we're in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7 now, and it says, Who has ears, let them hear what the Spirit mm -hmm. says to the churches. The one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life. Now, Jesus said, if you have ears, hear what's being said, and I... Yeah. I think everyone watching or reading or listening to this message has ears to hear, even if you're just reading the passage. Absolutely. Jesus is saying to everyone in Ephesus, everyone throughout all the generations, and all of you reading, you, listening, or me, watching him. this particular teaching, <laughs> take this message seriously and apply it to your life. Because at some point in our Christian walk, we might struggle with keeping our first love, and that's, of course, Jesus at the cross, and we might become busybodies and playing church and religion. Not a good thing. Oh, absolutely. We can easily become entangled in pursuing knowledge that puffs up and not Jesus' right. work at the cross that builds up. Now, Jesus tells us to be victorious over ourselves and the spirit of religion. He wants us to stay in love with his work at the cross, and he will give us you know, access to the tree of life, which is nice. symbolic of eternal <laughs> life in him. And the tree of life is mentioned actually in Genesis 3, verse 22, if you remember, in relation to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, right. Once Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and tree. evil, they were cast out from the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. to prevent them from eating and taking from the tree of life. Now, it appears that Adam and Eve really had lost their first love of God and they chose disobedience. Here's where it says that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. And it says, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Ever right. So ever here we got they were cast out because of their disobedience. Their disobedience. That's right. And the tree of life is watered from the river that flows from the throne of God in heaven. The tree apparently produces leaves and fruit 12 times a year that believers are going to eat from when they get to heaven. Well, actually, here's what that says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. It said, on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Looking forward to that. I'm sure there's going to be Food a chocolate fountain to be able to dip some fruit in when you're there. So it's <laughs> going to be very cool. All right. Now, seriously, Jesus wants us to remember that we have eternal life in him as our first love and as our savior above and beyond, above and beyond anything in this message. That's right. Okay, guys, before we finish the show, we're going to go ahead and recap our biblical thoughts for everyone. All right. Our first biblical thought in the show was our first love should be for his shed blood. And Jesus continues rebuking the Ephesians. And it was that what? They had lost their first love. Even though they had good theology and good religion, they had forgotten that it's always about right. Jesus' work at the cross. And not about playing church. Absolutely. All right, we're going to look at the second biblical thought we had, and that was bad practices can bring about his hate. And Jesus tells the Ephesians that if they have done well not to follow the practices of the Nicolaitans. Right, we're not really sure exactly what these practices were, even though we get some indication yes. from the letter to the church <laughs> in Pergamum. Uh, Jesus makes it clear that whatever they're doing, he hates it, right? Hates it. Now, it should be very clear, though, that we should only follow Jesus' teachings and <laughs> Jesus' practices. Right, and you can only do that, you guys, if you're personally involved in right. learning the Bible, which means outside of church, you're picking up the Bible, you're reading it, and you're applying it to your life. And I think it's very important if you're going to be able to tell the differences between Jesus' mm -hmm. teachings and some teaching that comes from man, you got to first know what Jesus has taught and what he wants us to practice, and then you'll be able to tell the Read difference. It, walk it out. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> and our final biblical thought was victory for the fight is the tree of life. All right. Jesus reminds us that victory is in him as our first love yep. and not our works or our deeds. And that we will eat from the tree of life that was once forbidden for man to eat from due to sin. All right. We want to thank you for tuning into this particular show, and we do invite you to come visit us at a word on the word.tv. And remember, Go serve the king by serving, serving others. others. Thank you for joining Lesson Tracy King for A Word on the Word. Visit awordontheword.tv to receive their latest audio or video broadcast. A Word on the Word is sponsored by First Century Ministry.